the creative power of the mutation selection mechanism as to produce all this uh, genetic information. Indeed. What is the most powerful demonstration, in your opinion, that the Darwinian uh, mechanism of natural selection has this great creative power? Well, I, I would give you, um, you asked me for the most powerful one, and I will give you two. The first one that I will give you are the reper re repeated observations of, uh, of random mutation and natural selection, as you like to call them in your own terms, producing new species. And I can give you several examples of new species that have emerged within human observation. The best example that I can give you is a butterfly, a genus of butterfly known as Hedylipta. Hedylipta is a genus of butterfly that feeds on various plants. It's endemic to the Hawaiian Islands, which means it's only found there. And there turn out to be two species of Hedylipta with mouth parts that only allow them, only allow them to feed on bananas. <laughs> now, why is that significant? It is significant because bananas are not native to the Hawaiian mm. Islands. They were introduced about a thousand years ago by the Polynesians. We know this from the written records of the Hawaiian Kingdom. And what that means is that by mutation and natural selection, these two species have emerged on the Hawaiian Islands within the last thousand years. And I think that's a very good case in point. And I'll give you another one if you would indulge me, but I figure you only asked for one. One another? Sure, go ahead. Okay, here's another. <laughs> Um, uh, in the November 7th or November 14th issue of Science Magazine, a number of investigators wanted to test the Darwinian hypothesis that you folks say is never tested. And the way in which they did this was to take the receptor protein for the human growth hormone. It's a receptor to which the human growth hormone fits in precisely, and they did it a terrible genetic disservice. They mutated, they cut out an essential amino acid right in the middle of the receptor called tryptophan. With that gone, just like that mouse trap, it no. wouldn't have ex been expected to work. They then allowed a natural selection process to take place to see whether the cells under their own observation could mutate the receptor gene sufficiently to bind the receptor. And after seven generations, lo and behold, there it was. One and it illustrates now. beautifully the ability of natural selection to respond to a mutations and proteins Did to co-evolve. Mr. B. I, I'd like to ask a different question. Uh, I do not find that result impressive, but we can talk about that later. When you say you don't find it impressive, that's what Richard Dawkins <laughs> calls the, the argument for, from yeah. personal incredulity. But you realize which is my evidence. You know. <laughs> my evidence against evolution is that I don't believe it. Well, it's because it's because well, of course yeah. what it has to do. It has to create this immense amount of genetic information, much Indeed, more sir. complex than any. Philip, and without, right. without recording it in the fossil record. Right. That's you know what, Phil? I just gave you two examples, and that's still not enough. May no. I ask uh, an, another question impressive. related to, to Heckel's embryos? Oh, absolutely. You, you not only showed these embryos in your book, but like other people, you said that things should be that way. You said in your book, uh, mutations that affect early stage of, of development are likely to be, to be lethal or deadly, and that mutations that cause less drastic uh, mutate or er, changes would occur at later stages. Again, you're like, not alone in this. Bruce Alberts, who wrote Molecular uh, uh, Biology of the Cell, uh, says much the same thing. Now we, now we know that is not the case and that uh, early embryos can in fact change because you and Bruce Alberts, the president of the National Academy of Sciences... Is there a question? Did, yes, here it is. <laughs> because you two did not... Uh, because you thought uh, Darwinism would produce this result which is now shown to be fraudulent, is it safe to say that no scientist in the world understands how Darwinism could affect embryology? Oh, absolutely not. May, may I answer even though we're out of time? Very briefly. Okay, very brief answer is, you read a quote and you pretended it meant something else. The quote that you read was, mutations in the early stage are less, or, are less likely to survive, not impossible, and then you pretended to say that it meant that they couldn't survive. The fact that something is less likely, the you, fact that something is less likely, figure, no, the I'm fact saying, that something, no. I'm answering, the fact that something is less likely does not rule it out. I agree with that. Alberts would agree with that. And I think everyone in the audience thank would you, agree thank with you, that too. Thank Miller. you. <laughs> Mr. Buckley will now submit the questioning for the opposition team. Um, let me go kick off, Mr. Buckley. Uh, I guess my basic question is, why are you on that side rather than ours? <laughs> I mean, are, are, are your objections religious? Uh, to, to, are you against evolution? Are you against natural selection? Uh, are, are your objections religious? Are they social or, or what? Well, I, I, had, uh, I object uh, to the way in which uh, your confederates will leave you out of it as a matter of politesse, conduct themselves. They conduct themselves by simply assuming that people who <clears throat> argue the contrary 
or naives or, or ignorant. It seems to be manifestly they are not. But uh, my, my objection to your position is its ideological fixity. <clears throat> what you're speaking from is a dogmatic position from which everything else derives uh, as, um, as one would expect. Right? I can't help feeling it that uh, to Seton Hall University, speaking from a dogmatic position, is not necessarily a fault. Um. <laughs> well, um, no, that, 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 that's quite correct. If you could um, give us a progenitor <clears throat> more conclusive than uh, Darwin, uh, we might uh, accept uh, his dogmas. <clears throat> the, 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 the notion that all dogmas are, are equal uh, is... Um, um, what? False. Is, uh, well, it's at, at, at least false, but it, it, it's, also, uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it's, it's also a disguise, really, for, for unmethodical thought, I would guess. But, well, go ahead. What, what, are you, what line are you pursuing? Well, I, 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 basically, I'm trying to understand why it is that you're, you're against evolution. I mean, I, I could well understand. <clears throat> is it because Richard Dawkins <clears throat> has, has uh, linked evolution with atheism? Is it because... Uh, some evolutionists have been socialists. Uh, why? Uh, oh, because if, if it is, uh, we'll give you a list of, that you'd like. No, no, let's not be silly. The, <clears throat> uh, the, 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 uh, for scientific materialists, the materialism comes first, the science comes uh, thereafter. So uh, my, my, my quarrel, and that of um, most of my colleagues, uh, is with the, <clears throat> the extent to which <clears throat> you seek to uh, imperialize over the entire question to the point of opposing a creationist uh, thought in, uh, in scientific and departments uh, within other uh, schools. This seems to be uh, quite, uh, quite unnecessary in order to advance your own uh, uh, postulates. Miss Scott. Is it necessary to invoke the hand of the Almighty in something like understanding cell division or understanding an internal combustion engine? No, if not, no. why is it necessary in understanding so, the history of life? It is so frustrating to say something, then have to say it again. Uh, uh, I, I said in my opening statement, the second sentence, was that uh, we don't demand that you acknowledge creation in, in, and displace evolution we demand that you acknowledge creation as an alternative explanation, one which we find more plausible. Now, th this is as far as I am r ready to go in this exchange. I am uh, a practicing Catholic under the circumstances. I've made certain commitments, but none of what I have s said yet uh, derives exclusively from that position. Mr. Berlinski is himself not a believer, and he's certainly eloquent in his dissent from your position. I think the... Well, go ahead, Ken. Let, let, let me ask a question along those lines, because you bring up your faith, and I have to tell you that over the weekend, looking for a weakness, I read Nearer My God, uh, your recent book, which I much admired. I thought it was a marvelous explanation of the faith that you and I share. Um, and I want to read a quotation to you, and, I, and as everyone in the audience will know, I came tonight with the, with the hope to be remembered as the guy with the placards. Um, and the quotation, the quotation is an important one. New knowledge has led to the recognition of more than a hypothesis in the theory of evolution. It is indeed remarkable that this theory has been progressively accepted by researchers following a series of discoveries in various fields of knowledge. The convergence, neither sought nor fabricated, of the, re or fabricated the results of work that was conducted independently, is in itself a significant argument in favor of this theory. Would you care to speculate who, who said that, sir? <coughs> Well, uh, the answer is, um, uh, I, ha I have no, no quarrel with it. Uh, within uh, 10 years after Darwin died, they uh, were able to, to document, uh, to a point that he hadn't in the 20 years since he had visited Galapagos, a certain phenomena. I, I have no quarrel with those phenomena, but I think it's correct to classify them as microevolutionary, not macroevolutionary. Well, in, in that point, I think you're in disagreement with Pope John Paul II, who made that statement. No, 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 wait a minute. <clears throat> Pope John uh, Paul II uh, said that he could not uh, countenance uh, uh, any, uh, uh, any explanation which uh, sought uh, to, to account for the forces of living matter other than uh, as mere epiphenomena of the matter and are, are therefore incomparable 
with in, in, incompatible